if you plan on building in this industry, these are some characteristics you have to adapt. You have to adapt. So leaders, I hope you have your pens and your pads because we're going to talk about the making, the making of a phenomenal network marketer. I want you guys to make notes of this. We're talking about the making of a phenomenal network marketer because most people don't understand it's the intangibles. It's the intangibles, guys, that take things to the next level. See, I want you to hear the philosophy that we believe in. Guys, the technical part of building in any network marketing company, believe it or not, do you guys know that's easy? That's, that's never the hard part because you can give a sixth grader a blueprint to follow and they can do whatever it takes to make it happen. But guys, what we're talking about is intangible characteristics that a lot of people don't possess, or you may realize I possess some of them, but we're trying to show you what's going to make you complete so that people will want to do business with you. See, that's a big difference. See, that's the arena we want you guys to get in on tonight. That's the arena, guys, that we want you guys to play with with us tonight because we want you to take your careers and your businesses to the next level. And the only way that's going to be able to happen if you learn to understand the intangibles. And that's very important that you know, guys. You can think it's going to be your talent. You can think it's going to be your skills. And you can think it's going to be, oh, what I did in the past in business. I promise you, that's going to take you so far. It's these intangible things that's going to take things to the next level for you. You ready? There are four important things that we got to cover on tonight. Here's the first one. We're talking about the making, the making of a great network marketer. Number one, humility. Now, this is where I'm going to be honest with you. I know already some people are going to get stuck, and let me show you why. Because I was there at one point. See, being a man especially, most men don't like submitting to another man. It's just, it's just challenging. It's hard. You are the provider of your family. You're the provider. Uh, you make things happen. The same thing happened with ladies. Ladies have a problem with submitting sometimes to another woman that can be beneficial to them. But let me show you why this is so important on tonight, and you need to understand this is imperative for your career, and they are going to go in this order because they all are going to lead you somewhere. Guys, humility must be possessed because that's the ability for you to recognize that someone else has what you don't. See, you have to understand that following the results is very, very important. You know, some of you guys, you don't like listening to your upline. You don't think they're worthy of listening to. You can stop listening to them when you surpass them. So if you think that you can do more than what it is that they're doing, then what we want you to do is put your plan of action in place and you surpass that individual, then you no longer have to respond to their mentorship or tutelage. But until that point, guys, humility is necessary because it's the avenue of the bridge that allows you to go to the next level. Let me show you why. Guys, I came into this industry. You know, my wife and I, we have been uh, entrepreneurs since the early 90s coming from New Orleans, Louisiana. I've always been a man that I figured it out for myself and, you know, I, I, you know, hey, you know, just go for it. You know, when you got a wife and four kids, sometimes you don't have time to think. You just got to provide. So my initial response was always just to figure it out and just to do it. But Mike Murdoch says something that was phenomenal. He says there are two ways that you get wisdom in this world. It's through mistakes or mentors. And see, what I have been doing is, I was getting a lot of my experiences through mistakes. So really, never in my life had I had a mentor. Never. Pretty much that I could just think of. So I was just, you know, muscling my way through life. But I was never getting the real results that I always expected or wanted. Then, guys, it came to an opportunity that my wife and I just actually came from. Phenomenal, phenomenal company. Phenomenal leadership. And God put me in a position where I had to humble myself to a 27-year-old kid. Now, I'm, I'm 40-plus years old as a man, and now I have to humble myself to a young giant at the age of 27 years old that helped change my life. 
through his mentorship. You know why? Because we realized that we needed humility. He was able to do something we hadn't done. He was having success that we had never achieved, and especially in that work market. And it wasn't until we bowed down and said, you know what, I'm coming to the table. I'm throwing all my philosophies out of the window. I'm coming to the table. I want to learn. Hey, listen, I'm humbling myself. You know why? Because I need to go to the next level. Yes, I, oh, I don't like you. I don't like the way you talk, look, sound, dress, whatever your reasons is for your upline who's having success. Listen to what we're saying. Your leader who's having success, and I was so glad that was the best move I ever made in my life. Because when we begin to possess that humility and we learn to do things how he told us to do them verbatim, that's what started creating the success in our lives. And that's what started making us more attractive in terms of individuals that we were never able to even get in the arena to have conversations about possibly being involved with us. Humility, guys. This right here opens the door for you to go to the next level. No one is trying to hurt you. I promise you, when you learn to humble yourself to your leadership, what it does is, guys, it puts you in a position to where now you can be exalted. I want you to remember this. Don't ever forget this as long as you're in the direct sales industry. If you can't elevate, don't expect to be elevated. Remember, you're sowing a seed. And remember, there will be a harvest that's going to be recouped from your actions. See, I want you to understand, guys, you, no one has to be an insecure leader. My, my wife and I, we're not insecure leaders, meaning that, guys, we love edifying the people that we're associated with. Guys, we don't try to hide our team from any particular person or individual. You know why? Because we want people to be with us because they feel there's a need to. See, the lowest level of leadership with the five levels of leadership is positional leadership. The worst thing you could try to do is build your people or lead your people from the fact of, I am a this or that in the company, and this is why you need to follow me. No, guys, you want people to follow you because they see a need to follow you. They have a reason to follow you. That's how you want to lead. And as a leader, you also must possess humility because you need to be the greatest servant among the people that you are associated with that you're leading. Stop always looking to be served and find out ways that you can serve. So humility goes both ways. And that's one of the things that we have to understand that's going to make you a great network marketer, guys. That's going to make you attractive. But you know what else I can tie into humility? A pleasing personality. Oh, my goodness. Most people that you find that are humble and have humility, people like them. A lot of people are attracted to them. Don't ever forget, you can attract more bees with honey than you can with vinegar. Make sure you know that. Don't ever forget that. When you get into your spats or your ways that you want to do things, remember how powerful humility is for the success of you and your family if you're going to be in this industry. Learn to humble yourself like my good friend Alex says. Alex Ruve says, Mr. Crump, I follow the results. When you have results, guys, that's something that you need to allow yourself to say, you know what? This person was able to do what I haven't been able to do yet. So until I can get there or surpass them or get to the next level, let me humble myself so I can find out what it is that needs to be done. I want to know everything in their mind. Guys, I promise you, I used to sit around and I took notes and I wanted to learn. I was hungry because I want to explain something to you. I'm going to save you guys some money and I'm going to save you some time. And I say this to prospects at events. Listen, if you don't have the humility to come into this company or any company for that matter, and with the person that you're coming on board with and the success that they're having, if you're not willing to humble yourself to their leadership, don't waste your money. Don't even get started. 
Because you won't go far. I promise you. Because you're going to bump your head. You're going to run into roadblocks. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to think, why did I make this decision? You're going to feel like it's not worth it. You know why? Because you're not communicating and you're not humbling yourself. And I want you to understand something, guys. Humility is not a mouth issue. It's an heart issue. You have to have humility in your heart. You can say whatever you want to a person with their mouth. Your actions is going to show, you know what? I fully respect what it is that you're saying and doing. I know it's hard, guys. I'm serious. Let me tell you why I know it's hard. Because I even had my challenges. Even realizing that I had to humble myself, there were still challenges. You know why? Because when you were accustomed to doing things your way and doing it for so long, I had to realize, listen, the mind, put out of your mind the way that you like to do things. Listen to what it is that you're being taught by this young man. Because obviously he knows something that you don't. And I used to always talk to myself and speak to myself. And whenever I was trying to do things the way I wanted to do it, he would give me directions on how things would need to be done. And then I would put my twist or my turn on it. And then I would realize, hold on, stop. That's not what he said to do. Do it exactly how he said do it. Say exactly what he said. Say, guys, that's the mindset that I begin to get in. And I want to share this with you. Pew, our business took off. It wasn't an accident. It was characteristics that we realized we had to have to become a successful network marketer. So if you're going to be in this industry, stop wasting time kicking against the grain and fighting these principles because it's inevitable that you're going to have to cross this bridge if you think you're going to be successful. You ready for our second one on tonight? The second, we're talking about the makings of a good network marketer. You ready? Edification. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Some of you guys, oh, you have a challenge with edifying. You don't realize that edifying, that's your bread and butter for your income. Some of you guys, you want to be a hero. Oh, I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. Oh, I can do it this way. Listen, why wouldn't you use the success of others that you have not been able to have? Why wouldn't you use that? Why, why wouldn't you take the time to use the success of others? That's what edification is all about. See, guys, let me show you. Edification is a two-way street. Because when you're edifying the person or the speaker or the individual that you're building up, guess why you're doing that? So they can say things about you that you can't say about yourself. So they can put the edification right back on you. That's it. Because what's going to happen is the person is going to look at the leader and see that they're validated. They're going to be able to read about that leader. They're going to be able to Google or research that leader. They're going to be able to see all the, the income they've earned and all the awards or whatever they want. So they know that person is validated. Now the prospect is saying, wow, someone that we really understand is validating, is validating the person that I'm associated with. Okay, this is okay. This person must be the real deal. Well, this is somebody that I need to partner with. Edification. Stop tearing down. Why wouldn't you use everything in your power to edify your leader that you're associated with? See, many of you guys tied into you think you're stroking the leader's ego, and what you're doing is you're actually taking away from you. It's that mindset. That has you to why you can't break through and you always getting mediocre results when you're involved in this industry. You have to learn to tear that barrier down. Edification has to be one of the most powerful tools that you can ever, ever, ever use in this industry. One of the most powerful tools. You know, people was asking me, and it's a funny question. It's a funny question that I've been asked. Come on. I've been, I've been hearing the way you've been saying about uh, what Chris Oliver has been able to do. And you've been talking about what Aubrey Bond has been able to do. And Jason Gill and all the money they've earned and the different people. Why, why, why are you never mentioning the results you guys have and the success you're having? Because it's not about us. Because edification is a two-way street. See, now we want to show that people associated with us are having success as well. That's what it's about. That's what it's really about, truly, in this industry. When you're willing to get out of the way of leadership that you see is up and coming and rising, step out of Lynn and Robert Grabowski's way, guys. Get out of their way. 
Stop always trying to be the show. Stop always trying to be the big deal because you don't even understand that's unattractive to your prospects and then your team is going to figure it out as well that you're just a plain egomaniac and then now you're going to lose them anyway. And by trying to cover them and keep them under your wing because you think in this industry sometimes we tend to believe we own people. Guys, learn to edify people. Let people make decisions without you manipulating them. Stop trying to turn them against your leadership. Stop trying to turn them against other distributors. Edify. Build up. We're not telling you guys to lie. We're not telling you guys to make things up. But you can say something positive about anybody. You can bring a new person up to me for the first time that just joined the company yesterday, and they're edifying things that I can say about them. Oh, hey, Mr. John Doe is a visionary, and we're so honored that he's one of the founding members of our company that's helping us push this company towards $20 million in our first 12 months. We thank him for the leadership skills that will be identified in the potential that he's been blessed with. We're honored to have him on board. Guys, I thank you so much for having Mr. John Doe. See, in other words, what I'm saying is you can say positive things, and it doesn't take that you have to make up or lie. This is what's going to take you to the next level. This is what's going to build your empire. Because what you're going to do is you're going to use the edification of the people that you're associated with that's already having the success. Guys, that gets you right in the door. Let me explain something to you. Guys, I'm going to say something publicly that you'll probably never hear most leaders say. I'm sorry, guys. This call is going to be transparent. Many, I know we have people from other companies on this call. And this call wasn't about trying to recruit nobody. We want you to be successful in the industry. I am a fan of success. I love to people, see people win, whether it's with us or not, and I mean that. But here's what I'm about to tell you guys on what you have to understand to move forward. Very, very, very key. Guys, you got to get edification to be a tool that you and your group is going to learn to use. Because when you learn to step aside and get to the point where you're a person that has a builder's mindset, where you build up, you don't tear down, what happens is in those scenarios, it makes you that much more attractive to your group, as well as to the prospect. Because they get a chance to see the system live and direct. Wow, look at the culture that these guys have amongst each other. Look at the way that these guys embrace one another. Look at the way that these guys are one. Because they're always talking positive about each other. And they mean it. Guys, they're always, see, sometimes as the leader, you got to learn to, to win and submit. But I'm getting to the transparent part. Guys, most of the people that my wife and I have personally enrolled in ULAB Global is people that are better than us. I'm not afraid to say that. I'm not ashamed to say it. I, I'm, not, I'm not scared to say that Ramon Fulcher is a better speaker than I am. I'm not afraid to say that Chris and Shan Oliver has more knowledge about the industry than I do. I'm not afraid to say that Aubrey Mary Bond has more influence than I do. I'm not afraid to say that Robert and Lynn Grabowski has more experience in the industry. Jason and Winetta Gill has. I'm not afraid to say those things. I'm really not. Because guess what? It only accomplishes the goal because I'm always looking for people who have skills that I don't and who are better than I am. I like to recruit up. I'm not looking for people that I can boss around and always going to look up to me and, oh, Damon, you're the greatest guy. No. Who's going to challenge me? Who's going to cause me to run harder? Who's going to cause me to sharpen my axe? 
Who's going to cause me to become more professional? Who's going to stretch me to begin to get more influence? That's who I want to bring to the table. I'm not afraid to go after the people who have more influence and who's been more successful than I am. See, that's the problem with you guys. You don't want to bring to the table people who have influence. You want people you have influence over. And what it means is the buck stops with me because they all into me. That's fine. Well, just get expected for limited success because now you're basing all of your success to your network. No, guys. We want to base our success to the networks of everybody that we're associated with. But we're going to always hold those individuals in high esteem, and we're going to be very transparent on who they are and our relationship and association with them. So stop undermining your leader in your mind. Stop undermining your leader in your heart. Surpass them if you have a problem with them. You got a problem with your leader? No problem. Surpass them. So now you can go to the next level of leadership, and you can communicate with someone else who can take you to the next level. Until that point arrives, guys, learn to humble yourself and edify them. Because watch this. Possibly what they've done may take a little more than what you're willing to do. You may be surprised. You may just be a little surprised when you're thinking you deserve their position. Because everybody wants to see the glory, but nobody knows the story. You don't know what that individual has been through. You don't know the challenges that they've had. You don't know those things. So you want to be very careful when you're thinking you should be in a position that somebody else is in. You don't know the price that's been paid. Be very mindful of that. Take your time. I'm telling you guys, one of the things in my heart, and I say this very humbly, and I pray that it stays this way. I never, ever wanted something that was for someone else. Never. I never wanted somebody's position. I never regretted, oh, what if it was, what if it was me? What if I found this first? I never, ever, ever wanted that. All I ever wanted in life was what was ordained for me. All I ever want is everything that's designed for the Crump household. That I don't want what's yours. I don't want your prospect. I don't want your income. I don't want your influence. All I want is everything that was designed for us to have. So when we come to the table with that type of attitude, what it does is it allows us to get along with you a lot better. Because here's what you need to understand. You don't have to feel threatened by us because we're not trying to take what's not ours. Because we don't want it. We're talking about what it's going to take to be a phenomenal network marketer in this industry. You're going to have to get this in your DNA. I don't care if you're going to do it at ULAB or another company, wherever you're going. You're going to cross this bridge, and I promise you, you will. Here's our third thing. You ready? This is the big one. Work ethic. Do you guys realize those that have work ethic already have 99% of the people in network marketing beat? You know why? Most people, not only just in the industry and life period, but especially in network marketing, they're lazy. Yep, I said it. Oh, they're lazy. They're not willing to do an event. They're not willing to do a one-on-one. -on -one. They're not willing to invite someone to a call. They don't want, all they want to do is call shots. Oh, everybody want to call shots. Oh, well, let me tell you how we should do the company. Well, let me tell you what's happening with this. Well, let me tell you what's going on. But let me tell you what happens. The minute you ask them to get under that spotlight, when I say that spotlight, the minute you ask them to get involved with something that's called for leadership, and I'm talking about work, put them in front of that room in front of a presentation. Oh, they're big and bad behind the scenes. They won't do, put them in front of the room where they got to train. They don't even want to open the meeting up. Oh, no, 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 no. No, you just want to hide in the crowd. But you want to always call shots and point fingers. You know why? Because it's not in you. You don't have no work ethic. You're lazy. You don't want to get out and do this. You don't want to see everybody wants to be the heavyweight champ of the world, but nobody wants to get in the ring and fight. Oh, nobody wants to take no blows. See, you think it's all about giving blows. Oh, you don't think you're going to get no bloody noses. 
Oh, everybody think, oh, DeMar Crawford, oh, he's been great. Let the guy, guy, he bring it. Oh, no, you forgot about when we first got into the industry and the first 40 people told us no. Reject it. Do y'all realize the average, the average person in any type of sales can't get past three to five no's. That's it. That's it. Their sales career is done. Three to five no's is the furthest they're going to go. The reason being is most people take rejection personal. But see, for me, rejection works the opposite way. It makes me stronger. Because my wife and I, we have a saying that we live by. We're going to let results be our revenge. See, the thing is, all the people that's talking, making the comments about where they think the company is going, what's going to happen. Here's what I want you guys to say. Guys, that's why we're not responding. Don't think we don't know. Don't think we don't know the chatter and the noise y'all are making. The reason why we're not responding physically and the leadership is on one accord, because guess what we made a decision to do? We're going to put some results up. We're going to see what you say when you see, keep seeing these numbers, when you keep seeing these new ranks breaking, when you start hearing these income stories, then we're going to see where you're at then. That's the way you quiet your critics. Because a person that's a critic is a person that can't do it. That's why they're a critic, because they sit on the side and they criticize those that get it done. That's what critics do. Some of you guys, you have relegated yourself to becoming a critic, and all you do is sit around and be critical of your leaders. You be critical of what's not done. You are critical of what should happen because you really don't have any work ethic. You're really lazy. And you be hiding behind a few calls you like to do a jump on when you're really not saying, hold on, man, let me dig in and make this thing happen, man. Let me go get in this ring and take some of these licks. Yeah, there going to be some blows that's given back. Get in the ring and fight if you want to become the heavyweight champ of the world. Because here's what I want to tell you. Guys, if you cheat, guess what's going to happen? Those lights going to expose you. When it's showtime, they're going to see, oh, that's not in that person's heart. You know why? They don't even know the comp plan. They stuttering. They got to call their leadership every two minutes, every time I'm asking them a question. You know why? They never taking the time to study it. You know what behooves me? It, it baffles me. How can a person be doing the business and they don't even know how they get paid? Look how lazy you are. You won't even take the time to study your own comp plan. You have to take it to keep calling you, this person and that person and all these thousand questions that you bombard your leader with constantly instead of you sitting there saying, study it. Guess what? How did we get a chance to know it? We have to learn it. We didn't have nobody always be calling. With the presentation, who do we have to see to do it? No, get out here and do it. Figure it out. Like John C. Maxwell said, go fail forward. Go drop the ball a little bit. Go mess it up. Go do it wrong. I want you guys to understand something. It's never going to be the perfect time. It's never going to be right. You'll never be ready. For those that sit around, I'm not ready yet. You'll never be ready. For those that are afraid, when the leader come around, oh, no, 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 you can do it for you today. Oh, you came today? Oh, since so you showed up. Well, we want you. You just go ahead and do it. Stop thinking you're, you're not as good as somebody else. Stop having that inferior complex. Because your leader walked in, you're thinking that they should do it and you're not worthy of doing it. You should, no, you get up there and do it. Stop being so inferior in your mindset and your thought process. You should be more like, oh, you coming in town? Do you mind if I knock the first part of that presentation out? Can I do it? Can, can I do the training? What role can I play? You know why? Because there's somebody that's ready to fight that's engaged. See, guys, I want you to understand something. Your why has to become bigger than your fears. Oh, the reason why I got to get this done. Oh, no, 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 no. It's way bigger than my fears. Anything somebody. Rejection? Are you kidding me? When I'm looking, at, looking in the eyes of my wife and four kids, you think I'm worrying about somebody that told me no? You think I'm worrying about somebody who's laughing or making a mockery? Thinking or praying for the demise of our company? Do you really believe that's my focus? You don't think that that's going to encourage me to work harder? Because I'm not afraid? 
God, there are people that are offended. I have the text messages on my phone that they didn't get a call from us when, about the company. You know why? Because there's some people that we just realized they weren't prepared for this journey because I want you to understand something. The philosophies that my wife and I have, we're not into collecting bodies. Guys, we, there's, there's so many people that could be sponsored right now. We're not, I'm not into collecting. I'm, we're way past that in our career. I don't want casualties of war. I don't want people just to throw in a business and, man, I'm, look, we, who wants to build? Save your money. Go do something else for your family with that. Who has the vision to propel us forward? Because when you get that type of rocket fuel that you're associated with, that brings your business and your life to the next level. So what? If it's going to take me a year, two years to get the right type of people, oh man, I'm patient. I'm patient because collecting bodies, throwing people in who I know not going to do the business or don't have any work ethic, don't have any influence, they're not trying to improve themselves, that's not what we're looking for. That's a headache is what it's called. You want to take the time and say, hey, listen, I'm sitting down talking to an individual who's a visionary so that I can do real business with that person. That's what we're looking to do when you're talking about becoming a phenomenal network marketer. See, we already know that where the work is at, we got 99% of the people be. They're lazy. That automatically separates you because whether you guys know these facts or not, you can fight them all you want. 70% of the people that's coming into the industry, they're dead on arrival. They're quitting. 70%. 70% is quitting. I'm going to say it to you again. The other 27%, 27% of the 30% that's left, they'll never see more than $5,000 in a month, one month period. They won't cross that threshold. The balance your, 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 your 3% to 1% will be those individuals who will cross over to the multiple six figures and the million dollar incomes. That's it. That's a small echelon of individuals. So obviously you have more 70 percenters than anything. And then you have a little smaller pool of 27 percenters. Oh, but those visionaries, oh, they far and few between. It's going to probably be those people are going to be on one hand that's going to take things to the next level, that are going to propel the company. So when you're sitting down, you want to be very efficient in your work because some of you guys, you're wasting your time on the wrong people. Yeah, because you don't want to improve yourself. What you want to do is you want to stay in your circle or your sphere of influence because these are the people I'm comfortable with. And once again, there's not a lot I can do. And the reason why some of y'all leaders – the challenges y'all having is because all you want to do is sit back and crack the whip on your people. Hey, what you doing? What you got going on? You're calling the people 10 times a day. You're sitting with your computer open all the time, watching the back office. Man, go build the business. Lead by example. You know one thing we will never be caught guilty of? Anybody being able to say, well, the reason I, why I'm not willing to do what you're asked is because you yourself have never done it. Not one person in our nine-year career has ever been able to bring that charge to us. Because anything we ask for someone to do, that's exactly what we do. Let me explain something to you guys. If, as a leader, if I ever tell you about a situation where I'm telling you, hey, man, listen, if you can afford to do some of these events, don't charge people. Oh, I know some people got the philosophy. Oh, man. Now, I'm not trying to tell you every event has to be free. Stop it. That's don't, and don't get out of context distributors. That's not what I'm saying. We're talking about like training situations, certain things that you do. In other words, don't always try to do things to where you, you're figuring out ways to make money off your people. Man, we want to build the business. I don't want to manipulate the people that I'm with trying to take advantage. I want to help them get money. So things that we can do and we know we don't have to charge them. And some people have the philosophy, well, you got to understand. It's got to be a sacrifice. they got to pay because that shows that they're interested. I get all that. And there is sometimes that applies. But then there's also sometimes where 
Freely have you been given? Freely should you give. You've received freely. So why are you always trying to charge somebody for something? If there's something that you can do, and it can benefit them, and it can be free, I mean, make money off building the business. Don't always try to figure out ways how you can manipulate the system to get compensated from your people. That's not a good, strong work ethic. Man, I want to get out here because I don't ever, ever, ever want them to ever be able to say, well, this is what you've done. This is why we're doing it this way. Remember, your people are going to do what it is that they see you do, whether it's good or bad. Whether it's good or bad. We want you to understand that. Good or bad, guys, they're going to pick up on those traits. That's why you have to be very conscious of what you're demonstrating before them. Because they're looking at you. They're seeing these things. It's not about taking advantage of your platform. That's not what it's there for. Listen, your gift is going to make room for you. You don't have to try to manipulate to do what needs to be done. That's not what it's about. Put yourself in a position where the people that are associated with you can be elevated. Listen, it's time for some of the leaders, guys, it's time, you are, you're already successful. It's time now that you become significant. Significant, it's now when you're duplicating success in other people's lives. That's the joy and the pleasure. That's what my wife and I live for. You don't understand, guys, when we're always talking to the leaders and the up-and-coming individuals, and they told us, oh, we've been able to do this. Guess what my check was last week? I've been able to make this amount of money. Man, that does my heart well. Because families are winning. That's the purpose. That's the purpose of what we do. Why? Because we're talking about the traits that's going to be needed. To become a good network marketer. Guys, the last trait. Influence. It has to happen in this order. Humility. Edification. Work ethic. These are things you have to master. That's going to lead to your influence. Your most powerful asset. I'm going to say something that will be very transparent. Some people are not going to like this statement. A lot of leaders may not like this statement I'm about to say. Guys, <clears throat> there's some people, you can't build the business how other people build the business. Well, the mind, that sounds, that sounds hypocritical. Because what you're trying to say is somebody is better. Or, and, and, and I already know I read where it says, God is no respect of person. Slow down. Let me explain myself. The reason why I can say that is, guys, you can fight it all you want. But most people may not have the ability to build the business like Robert and Lynn Grubowski or Jason and Winetta. Ramon and Tyra, Chris and Jan, or Ray and Mary. You know why? They have more influence. The reason why I'm saying this to you guys, and I want you to understand this and know this, because sometimes as leaders, we try to think, make you think that, oh, okay, let me show you how you build it. You hang out in the coffee shops, and nothing wrong with that. Oh, nothing. I'm not saying nothing wrong with that. That's why I'm, I'm telling you, I'm walking through this very carefully. Because I want everybody to understand where I'm coming from. Yes, you are. You, you will be out there in the cold market prospecting and Starbucks and, and hanging out. But guys, most leaders have already paid their price in that area. So they are able to pick up the phone and make phone calls. And they are going to be people that's not going to join the company they're going to join the person. Most of you guys don't realize you haven't reached that level of influence yet. 
That's not a duplicatable trait. That takes time. That's only time is going to allow that. That's time. Because, see, what most people have done, they have confused popularity with influence. Oh, I know a lot of people. Yeah, but how do they know you? Popularity and influence is two different things. You're the person, everybody likes to come to your house because you throw the extravagant parties, you have all the great food, have a good time. That's why people associate with you. But now, here's the question. Who can you move just on your word of who you are? Now, that's influence. When you can pick up the phone and you can get 25 applications because you're saying it's time to make a move. That's what these leaders have earned the right to be able to do that. And some of you guys have a problem with it when you're not saying to yourself, hold on, let's be fair. Christian Shane has been in the industry almost 30 years, guys. The guy has been full-time pretty much all that. Hold on, hold on, guys. Jason went out of kill. Oh, man, almost 20 years. Winning in companies. Whoa, 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 whoa. Robert Lynn Grabowski, guy, 30, 30 plus years training all around the world. See, you gotta be fair. Don't, you can't be mad at them because they're succeeding because, watch this, let's look at the opposite effect. I know guys that have been in the industry 25 years. I know guys that's been in the industry 30 years. They don't have influence to bring five people into business. Oh wow. So time is not the factor. Time is not the factor. They can't bust a grape. They can't get seven people to dial into a conference call. So time is not the issue. Influence is. That person kept a phenomenal track record over all those years to where now people are still buying in to who they are and their leadership. Do not fault them for that. That's one of the most powerful assets assets you will ever possess in network marketing is your influence. All of you guys who manipulate, where I say manipulate, you do things strictly for your benefit, but you're playing like, oh, no, this is for everybody and this is for us. Guys, you better realize when you start to make decisions, you better think of the people that you're associated with. I'm not saying that you have to always consult with them to make the decision because as a true leader, you got to learn to make decisions. But I can also say to you, you also need to understand that, hey, listen, there are some times I just need you to buy into my influence. Do you guys know the best way to build influence with someone is to do it without them? Stop always begging and pleading people to run alongside of you. Guys, replace them. Just just go figure it out. Don't don't always beg people and, oh, you know, you need to be with us. Don't always, when you're talking to somebody on the phone, make them feel like they're missing something. Playing the fear loss game, all of that stuff. See, that's the only thing. See, with me, network marketing, I got to be honest with you guys. I'm not really as good at network marketing the way some people may think. Let me show you why. Because I'm not good at playing the games. I don't like manipulating. I don't want to have to do all that. I don't have to convince you. I don't have to, oh, fear, oh, this is what's going to happen. I don't want to do the trickery. I want to be able to sit down and be honest with you. It's like a guy from another company that I talked to. His company's got shut down. The guy was making over $100,000 a month. We had a good conversation with him. And as I was on the phone with him, I was just simply telling him. He was like, well, tell me why you guys are the best. I said, no. I said, it's not time for me to make statements like that. I said, because everybody has the best complex. Everybody has the best products, according to them. Somebody's lying. There can only be one best. Somebody's lying. I say, listen, sir, we have a long way to go. We have a lot to prove. I said, now, maybe down the line, that may be a statement that I can answer for you. I said, but we still have to be proven. 
I said, so to try to convince you on why us, no, that's a question you would have to ask based upon you assessing the facts. You tell us why us. You know what the man said? Man, I like you already. Because I'm not here to try to convince you or try to get you to believe on why we need to do this to get into that network marketing jargon stuff. You better, you better get started now because the company, we, we have right at a thousand people. I'm telling you, this ain't going to 10,000 to 50 people in the next week or two. You better get your position locked in. I'm not doing that. Do you see an opportunity or a collaboration that could possibly take place with us as we're moving forward with the vision? Would, would that be more in, in alignment? Where, where, where are you going? Because here's to be honest with you. I really hope that your company opens back up so you guys can get your income restored. That's really my hope. Because I know what some people are saying who think backwards. Oh, their company shut down. Let's go get all of them. They're, let's, let's be like vultures or cannibals. Man, I don't, I don't, I don't want to prey on their lack of, of success right now. I'm hoping the best for those people, man. Now, if someone wants to come organically and from a genuine conversation and they feel the need to, but I'm not trying to paint a picture to them that the fall, the, 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 the sky is falling. That's why you need to join us. That's cowardly. That's what people who have no influence or no confidence, that's the type of stuff they do. No, listen. We want you to come because you want to be here. We don't want to keep you. We don't want to have to force you to be here. We don't want to have to manipulate you being here. That's not the way you build if you're going to be a good network marketer. Man, sit down. Go to your leader. Tell them your issues, your problems. Get it off of your heart. Because let me show you the injustice you're doing. If you haven't went to them. And you've already made an assessment or a judgment of them. And you haven't consulted with them. That's de-edification. You got an issue or a problem? Man, talk it out, man. Talk with that individual. That helps your influence. Because I want you to understand something. God, the man, Trump, has so many flaws and and, 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 and situations about him. So many things that I say and I do wrong. I promise you. Some of you guys talk to my wife. She can show you a laundry list. But the one thing I can tell you. Guys, I ain't looking to lie to nobody. I don't want to make it that way. I, I don't want to. I don't want to have to. I don't want to have to lie to you about the situation. I don't. Meaning that. I don't want to have to paint the picture. To be more than it really is. Get you involved. Man, you know what? Man, we're, 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 we're a company that's coming out of the gates and, man, we just getting started, man. I can tell you one thing. Things go the way that we're projecting that they're going to go. This will be a company that you can shape your legacy at. You can have your imprint in it. That's what can happen. That, that's the possibilities. But to try to sway and play and and do all the tactics? That's not how you have to build your business. I don't believe in that. And I don't believe the leadership should have to do that. Man, state the facts. Look people in their eyes. Be honest with them. Help them manage their expectations. Stop selling them a dream. Tell some people when they get started. Hey, listen. I want you to understand something. No, I know you want to go diamond this week. But I need you to understand. You don't have any influence. You don't have a network. What you need to do is you need to self-develop first. You need to come to some more trainings. First of all, you need to learn how to articulate. You need to learn how to dress. Not listen. Not in terms of name brand. You need to change your attire. Guys, these, these are things I had to do. I, I had to learn how to dress professionally because I'm thinking, oh, well, no, I, I'm, I'm going to stay real to my roots. I'm going to keep it real. I'm, I'm going to stay with my jeans and my tennis shoes because I need people to associate with people like me so they can know the average person. That's all great. 
And you can do that. But you're going to keep attracting and keep the real crowd. You want to cross over? You want to diversify your business? You want to start doing some international exp expansion? Success is a language. You better learn to speak it. You better come out those thoughts that you have that's keeping you at the level that you're at. And you better start opening your mind to individuals that can help you get to the levels that you desire to go to. You better start working on your influence. And you work on your influence by being honest with the people that you're associated with. Stop trying to take advantage of them. Let them tell you that it's hard. And you tell them the challenges you have and the things you're going through. So that way they can be like, okay, this is normal, then I'm okay. I'm fine with that. Do your best to include them as much as you can to make them always feel appreciated and they feel like they're a part of something special. Don't take advantage of your influence. Don't misuse your influence. Don't always use your influence for gain. Because people trust you. They're going to buy into you. Don't take advantage of them. Make decisions that saying, you know what? I'm thinking of these families as well because they're believing in us. Because remember, there are people that are signing the application, not about the company, but about you. They're associating with you. Most people, they won't bet on the company. They're going to bet on the person. Guys, the making of a good network marketer. Humility, edification, work ethic, and influence. You've got to possess these four things to take your business and your career to the next level. It's mandatory. Guys, we can show you the technical part all we want. We can show you the structure, and we're going to continue to teach the, teach the structure 2G. Do team the goal. That's not going to stop. We can show you that until you're blue in the face. It's until you master the intangibles because remember, you can't fulfill your structure if you don't have any people to fulfill it with. Because there are things within you that's clogging your drain that you need to unclog. And once you do that, now the floodgates open up by working on the intangibles that's necessary and needed.